Hello everyone, and this is my review for WWE NXT on August the 12th, 2015. And, you know, they started out the show, and I believe this might be the last show before the NXT TakeOver um, special next week. I'm not sure if they're going to do an, a new episode on Wednesday and then do the special on Saturday. I'm actually not sure how that's working. Um, <clears throat> but they started out the show this week with Solomon Crow going up against Ty Dillinger. And they were starting out this new gimmick with Ty Dillinger, the uh, perfect... Ten gimmick and like they and it did seem to get behind the crowd a little bit in the terms like they had ten signs up and he was doing everything in that aspect. Um, decent match, uh, some decent work here. Uh, no, nothing too special between the two of them uh, at this point. Solomon Crow, I have not been uh, a big fan of since he came in. He had a lot better of a match this week than he had had in uh, previous weeks. So, you see some improvement there in his match quality. Um, no real promo time between the two of them, but, you know, uh, that's not what they were going for at this point in time, at least with those two. So, uh, nice to see that they're... Nice to see that they're going somewhere with Ty Dillinger and trying something. They obviously gave him the win in this case. They don't know where they're going with uh, Solomon Crow yet, so who knows where they're going to actually go with that at any point in time. Uh, up next, you had uh, Baron Corbin in what was yet another 30-second match. Um, you know, th that's basically his gimmick at the at the po at this point to you know finish off his opponents really quickly and then complain that he doesn't have competition. Uh, and you got that, th but you you got that again this week. But he started cutting the promos like, "Who's going to actually challenge me? Who's going to actually challenge me?" And lo and behold, Samoa Joe. They're finally going with it. Uh, not much, not too much build uh, going into the match because they did make the match later in the night. I just uh, I like the t the promo time that the two of them had between each other and the aspect of uh, you know uh, Baron Corbin actually going a little bit over initially over Samoa Joe, but then eventually gets choked out and put into the put in that kind of losing position that he had never been in before in any way. Um, was a nice way of going on, uh, and we'll see where they go with everything with their match at the NXT special. You also had some promo time uh, throughout the show with, um, uh, you had more backstage promo stuff, along with Tyler Breeze talking more about Jushin Thunder Liger coming in and about their match, so you had a, de you had a promo with them. Uh, decent promo, nothing too spectacular for that. Kind of what you expect out of Tyler Breeze. Um, not in the terms of nothing really special, just you get you got what you kind of expected from Tyler Breeze in that case. Um, you also had another backstage vignette with uh, Bull Dempsey doing more of the him getting into shape type uh, vignettes. You also had a vignette for Apollo Crews talking more about him debuting and debuting at the next NXT special. So, you know, again, couple decent promos inside of there. You also had a promo with the Vaughn Villains, and they're going with this area of, um, you know, they're trying to find a way to neutralize Alexa Bliss, but th they had Alexa Bliss come up in there, of course, do her, uh, do the thing where she, ba or, you know, basically do what she did the, uh, during the, after the tag team title match, which was, uh, you know, slap one of them to, you know, it's like, oh, you guys can't do anything to her. Now they've got to find some way of neutralizing her, which will probably be some, uh, you know, someone they bring in at the special itself. It's like, oh, and this person is going to be um, accompanying us to the ring. Uh, in some way. Uh, that's where I'm expecting the storyline to go. Uh, so we'll see how they go with everything there. Obviously that's the storyline they've been playing over the past few weeks is that Alexa Bliss is kind of stopping them from winning but they need to find some kind of way of neutralizing her because they're playing uh, chivalrous gentlemen and they would never hit a woman in something in that sense. So obviously they'll have to bring in a female or a woman to uh, neutralize that. So we'll see where they go with it and who they decide to bring in as well uh, at that at that point in time. So we'll see where they go with that for the uh, tag team title match at the uh, you can't say pay-per-view but it's NXT special. Uh, so that brings into the Finn Balor match. He went up against Marcus Louis. Uh, short match, nothing too spectacular. Kind of just showing off a little bit more with Finn Balor. You had at the beginning of the show where William Regal 
uh, did announce that it was going to be a ladder match between Kevin Owens and Finn Balor. I, I like the promo from uh, William Regal in this case, you know, basically saying he doesn't necessarily want to cave into Kevin Owens' demands, but both competitors agreed to the match, so he was okay with it at that po at that point in time. So I, I like the promo and how they actually uh, did things there uh, for. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, for that match. And then you had the match with Marcus Louis and Finn Bauer. Short match, like I said, just basically what they, uh, you know, showing what he can do in the, uh, you know, one of those matches where you just go out there and do what you can do with everything. Uh, more aspect of in terms of story was kind of thrown in there with uh, Kevin Owens attacking Finn Balor after the match and getting the upper hand this time for the first, pretty much for the first time since. I think before the Tokyo show that he's had the upper hand on Finn Balor where he actually left him laying in the ring standing over him and kind of and, you know mocking him like he all like he does with everybody mo uh, mocking him by uh going through their typical hand gestures or routines in some way shape or form. So again that was actually a pretty good segment of the show. I liked where they went with that and I actually do like the aspect of Kevin Owens having the momentum going into the pay-per-view. Um, this leads me into the main event, which was Becky Lynch versus Bayley, uh, go, the winner going up against Sasha Banks. Really good match with them, and you can tell the story that they've been really building around. Like uh, Becky Lynch and Bayley put on a really good match in the main event, uh, and I like the commentary that they were doing with Sasha Banks as well. Um, and talking up both of the both of them and everything in that and everything on that aspect and basically you could tell the story is still more on Bailey's side because they've been trying to make this whole um, her overcoming her initial like shortcomings in the terms of like matches she's lost in the past, like losing the Becky Lynch in the past, losing the Charlotte in the past, losing the Emma in the past since she's come back from the injury. And that was what you got in this match where she um, where she gets the win and gets the number one contendership to go up against Sasha Banks. So, uh, and like I said, the match that the two of them put on was really good. I like how they were uh, combating their uh, like suplexes towards the end, which led into Bailey getting the roll-up victory. I actually don't I actually kind of like that aspect that she doesn't necessarily always win with her finishing move in there, and it came off well in this match with what they were do, uh, what they were going for. So again, really good main event. And of course, you got the typical stare down between challenger and champion between Sasha Banks and Bailey afterwards, and. Uh, yeah, that was pretty much it for NXT. Overall, the show was really good going into the NXT special. This is the last episode before the special. Uh, so we'll see how, how that actually works out in everything. But a uh, really good episode this week. I, I liked the backstage vignettes going into the NXT special with the Bond villains and um, Apollo Crews and you know, the and also with Tyler Breeze as well. I thought that came off really well, uh, really good. Um, I like the promo time between Baron Corbin and Samoa Joe. I thought that worked out great. The uh, Kevin Owens Finn Balor setup I felt was uh, came off really good as well. So overall, really good show. The and the main event kicked uh, did do really well to end the show as well. That it's. They have shown that they can end the show with the females on NXT, and you're in good hands to get a good match and a good story told in the match itself. So, um, overall, again, a really good NXT this week, and that was that's a good thing leading into their actual NXT special. So that is my review for WWE NXT, and I thank you guys for watching.